Hey guys, I'm now joined by Jeff Galfer. He's the actor and creator of Jeff's Place. Thanks so much for sitting down with me today. Yeah, I'm happy. I love the succulents. I so know there's I'm a feeling, lot of them. Yeah, and I feel comfortable with them there. So That's good, because I was worried there was too many on this table. No, the color and the texture is is uh, is relaxing, so I appreciate some that. Some are real and some are fake, FYI, if you can spot them. Okay, well, we'll have a quiz later we'll on. We'll have a quiz later. Okay, <laughs> let's dive into Jeff's Place. You say your show is basically Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood meets Twin Peaks. Which are two things that seem like they don't mix very well. So, kind of break down that explanation for us. Well, yeah, I mean, certainly it's uh, there. There is a children's show motif going on, uh, but we tend to work as a group in the subversive. So we like to always flip the lid on what audience expectations are. So our show, just when you sort of are falling into that children's show motif. We kind of pull the rug and it becomes something very different. And that's sort of where the Twin Peaks aspect is, is that you really never know what's going to happen. You never know how the tone is going to shift at any given moment. And uh, it's very surprising for that reason. And it doesn't seem like you've done anything quite like this before. So what inspired you to kind of take this leap into this project? Um, well, we were looking for something that would highlight us as actors and us uh, and our aesthetic as creators. And uh, since we tend to like offbeat and eccentric, but something that's grounded and something that we all recognize, mm -hmm. um, after much conversation and trying to figure out what we wanted to work on, we landed on this idea of a Mr. Rogers type themed show. And something about it felt very nostalgic and close to us and something that we crave these days, especially because the world has gotten so filled with rage and anger and judgment. And to return to a time that was really about learning and perspective and understanding felt very comfortable to us. And that allowed us to sort of drive into it. And then once we were in, we could sort of reshape that form and modernize it and sort of introduce this element that, um, you know, creating our re own realities and creating our own truths is something that we really do now. And it's something that we... Um, you know, and everybody has their own facts. Everybody has their own reality that they live in. And uh, this was our way of sort of hammering that down while providing something that people could recognize, you know. Now, the titles of the episodes are interesting. They have different names like comfort and gratitude and meditation, yeah. manners. Does that, is that kind of like the overall theme for each episode? or? Yeah, so we had a very, you know, funny playbook for how we were going to formula, uh, how, how the formula of the show was going to work. And one of the things we wanted to do was theme out each show to a very specific theme. But then that episode would never really be about that theme. <laughs> so funny. Manners is about dancing. And Teleportation is about how babies are made. <laughs> and Comfort is about sort of a, a betrayal. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, everything is just sort of a flip on what you're expecting. Got it. And where do you ideally see this living? Do you see it living in traditional realm? Do you see it streaming? Well, one of the things we love about this format is that it's so conducive to so many different formats of multimedia. So we started as a digital short series. But the great thing about it is we found ways to blow it out into a full-blown television show. We thought about reformatting into what could be a variety show that takes place at Jeff's Place, sort of like the old um, Pee Wee's Playhouse stuff. Yeah. Um, we also started creating a podcast that um, introduces new elements of the world by listening to what's going on. And we're even like investigating the idea of what if uh, virtual, uh, virtual reality was part of this and you were able to enter the world as an audience member in virtual reality and sort of interact as the show's going on. We think it's a really cool show because it could be one of the first that actually tackles every different multimedia and right. allows you to get a different perspective on that story. And it seems like it would also even if it doesn't go full spectrum, it gives you optionality for you know being nimble to where it does get picked up. Yeah, the great thing is no matter who comes to us, we can say, oh, this is how this is going to work with you or this is how it's going to work with you. Because the, you know, we didn't talk much about it, but the show, the children's show is actually taking place in the lead character's head and he's dying of a coma. And this is his way of um, sort of living the reality he would prefer to live and make sense of what's going on in his life. So the fact that this is already sort of a surreal world that we're living in, it is so open to so many different avenues in terms of how we connect to it. Wow, 
Very interesting. Jeff, thank you so much for sitting down with thank me. Thank you. I'm so excited it. that you're celebrating it. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, thank you, Jeff Gaffoli. Thank you so much for joining me here at Series Fest.